Welcome fellow travelers. Today we're at Fort Rod Hill National Historic Site near Victoria, British Columbia. Let's go and explore. Fort Rod Hill is a coastal artillery fortress and naval base constructed at Esquimalt Harbour for defense of Victoria and was part of the larger defense strategy of the British Empire and Canada in place between 1878 and 1956. Britain's Royal Navy began using Esquimalt Harbour way back in the 1840s with the Royal Canadian Navy establishing a naval base there during the Crimean War which ran between 1854 and 1856. By 1870 the site had grown to include storehouses and workshops but was noted for its lack of defenses. Five batteries of guns were quickly constructed using earthen ramparts shored up by timber logs. But on inspection they were declared inadequate it was recommended that a permanent garrison of a hundred Royal Marine Artillery with modern guns and a submarine minefield be established as a permanent defense. Between 1894 and 1897, two separate forts were constructed, one at Macaulay Point and another at the location of Fort Rod Hill, a rock bluff overlooking the western side of the narrow entrance to the Esquimalt Harbour. Both of these forts were equipped with three 6-inch disappearing guns. Because of the space limitations and layout of Rod Hill, two of these guns were mounted with a common magazine in the lower battery. While a third gun, which sat 200 meters uphill, required a separate battery. The guns sat in concrete emplacements 10 feet thick and were also protected by the rock of the hillside. These guns could be loaded and aimed while in the protected down position using information provided by a central observatory post. And when they were ready to fire, the five ton barrel would be raised by a large hydro pneumatic system. This system ensured that the gun barrel was exposed to the enemy for the minimum amount of time possible. In addition to these guns, which were intended to fend off an attack of enemy light cruisers, smaller quick-firing guns were also installed to help deal with the potential threat of unarmored torpedo boats. At Fort Rod Hill, the Belmont Battery was constructed to house two of these quick-firing guns, aided by searchlights controlled from the Defense Electric Lighting Directing Station. The Defense Electric Lights were installed around 1902. Two were located on the foreshore at Fort Rod Hill and two on the opposite side of the harbour. Three of the four lights were used to illuminate the large area of sea immediately outside the mouth of the harbour. And the fourth one had a concentrated beam which was used to sweep the sea further outside the harbour to give an early warning of any approaching vessels. For heavy defense, a battery of guns was built at Signal Hill on the east side of Esquimalt Harbour. These guns were activated around 1912, but even then they were rarely fired because the concussion from the guns caused significant damage to the windows in the Esquimalt village below. One notable incident at Fort Rod Hill happened when the lower battery guns almost fired on two friendly submarines that appeared under the cover of darkness on August 4th, 1914. These submarines had been purchased by British Columbia Premier Richard McBride, who believed that the federal government wasn't doing enough to defend the Canadian West Coast. And on his own initiative, McBride purchased two submarines from a manufacturer in Seattle. Initially, the gunners at Fort Rod Hill didn't recognize the submarines and almost fired, but fortunately, they were informed right at the last minute that these were our new Canadian defense subs. By the beginning of the Second World War, the original guns were considered obsolete, and in 1944, a new quick-fire gun was installed. And also during World War II, the original four electric lights were replaced with a total of 17 modern searchlights. 
After World War II ended, the site was closed as a military base in 1956 and was designated a National Historic Site of Canada in 1958. Just beyond the walls of the fort is the Fiskard Lighthouse, which was the first permanent lighthouse on Canada's west coast and is still in operation today. It was built by the British in 1860 before Vancouver Island was even part of Canada at a cost of around 12,000 Canadian dollars. But it showed commitment from the British government to the colony of Vancouver, especially in response to the American gold miners flooding to the region at the time. The Fiskard Lighthouse first lit up the night on November 16, 1860. And along with the lighthouse at Race Rocks, it guides mariners to the Royal Roads Anchorage, the Esquimalt Harbour and Naval Base, and also helps point the way to the Victoria Harbour. The lighthouse is constructed of materials from local brickyards, but the lens and lamp apparatus were brought over by the first light keeper, Mr. George Davies, who travelled from England in 1859. Inside, the cast iron spiral staircase leading to the tower was constructed and brought up from San Francisco. Permanent steel shutters were added to the landward side of the lantern room because the concussion from the 6-inch guns at the newly built Fort Rod Hill was causing cracks to appear in the lantern windows. Although many of the early lighthouse keepers actually lived on site at Fiskard, the final keeper had permission to live ashore but rode out to the lighthouse every evening to man the light. In 1929, the lighthouse was fully automated and it's still in operation today, marking the home base for the Royal Canadian Navy. In the early 1940s, the acetylene lamp in Fiskard's tower was replaced by a battery-operated electric light. In 1950, a causeway was constructed out to Fiskard Island from the foreshore at Fort Rod Hill. And today it allows sightseers to get up close and personal with this historic building. After 1957, the job of a permanent lighthouse caretaker was ended. This allowed vandals to access the site whenever they wanted and resulted in a major fire to the lighthouse. The exterior brick structure acted as a chimney for the fire and the interior of the lighthouse was gutted. Only some of the checkered flooring and the iron staircase survived. The lighthouse was officially declared a National Historic Site on its 100th birthday in 1960. Canada Post has officially commemorated both of these historic sites, issuing a stamp of the Fiskard Lighthouse in 1984, and a stamp for Fort Rod Hill in 1985 as part of the Forts Across Canada series. Thanks for joining us today to learn a little bit more about Fort Rod Hill. Hope to see you again on our next adventure. For now, it's time to exit through the gift shop.